one. Hello, this is Justin Williams with the Wolfpacker Podcast. I'm joined today, as always, by the editor of thewolfpacker.com and fellow co-host Matt Carter. We are going to preview NC State's Week 3 matchup against Texas Tech at Carter-Finley Stadium, set for a 7 p.m. kickoff uh, on ESPN2, for those of you that can't make it to Carter-Finley Stadium. Um, But before we get started into this podcast, some quick notes and reminders for the listeners and viewers at home. Please remember you can subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you listen to us, Apple, Spotify, Google Play. We're also on YouTube. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, and drop a comment while you're at it. You can watch us on YouTube, you can listen to us in podcast form. Pretty much every platform you uh, consume your sports content, we're there. Um, Plus, don't forget, sign up for a a year's worth of premium subscription to thewolfpacker.com for just a dollar as part of the On3 network. Get all of your insider NC State athletics information, recruiting trail uh, updates. If you want to be the most informed player or informed fan at your tailgate, uh, you need to be a member of thewolfpacker.com. So take advantage of that deal. A dollar gets you a year's worth of premium service. All right, Matt, let's uh, let's jump right into this Texas Tech game. NC State last week cruised to victory over Charleston Southern. Not a lot to... Uh, recap there so you know as, as i said on the last preview podcast we're going to have a upon further review segment of uh of our preview podcast just kind of you know going over what happened in, in the last week anything that we missed i don't think we missed anything in the post game reflections podcast i think you can just take that win for what it was which was uh a butt whooping against a team that was clearly outmatched but now nc state gets a more Formidable opponent in Texas Tech coming to town. So, Matt, uh, you you said before we started this podcast that you watched a good bit of the end of that Texas Tech win over Houston last week. Texas Tech comes into this game two and zero on the season. Uh, they beat Houston thirty three to thirty in double overtime at home um, there in Lubbock. So, Matt, this Texas Tech team is coming in with some momentum they're not going to be a ranked opponent but i don't know if they received any votes in the ap poll maybe kind of a fringe ranked team you're obviously dealing with a team that's expected to go bowling this year um just how how big of a challenge do you think texas tech is going to present to this nc state team and and has your opinion of texas tech changed at all since the beginning of the season because i know at the beginning of the year you know you rank all the opponents and you you predict all the games and this game has been clearly circled as as a consensus win as a game that nc state will be favored in going into the preseason but maybe texas tech presenting a little bit more of a challenge coming into this game with some momentum yeah kind of hard to tell because uh this is why you don't get into the stats too much right they beat murray state in, in week one uh 63 to 10. So clearly that was a mismatch. That's an FCS versus FBS opponent. Um, and then, you know, Houston was ranked. That's a nice win on paper. They were ranked. But we also got to remember Houston really badly struggled uh, week one winning their game. Um, yeah, they, I, I, I believe they played uh, UT San Antonio, if I'm correct. I'm looking it up real quick. They did. And... Yeah, they were trailing 21-7 to going into the fourth quarter of that game. Uh, managed to rally the fourth overtime and, and win it in the third overtime uh, on the road. So, yeah, why Houston only fell one spot in the poll after winning in triple overtime to UT San Antonio and NC State fell by five spots in the poll after losing, after winning. I'm sorry, Houston won, but uh, NC State went by one point in regulation against East Carolina and fell five spots in the poll. So a little bit of inconsistency there, but... Um, As to be expected with these early season top 25s. Uh, yeah. Uh, too, I thought East Carolina, a side note, looked pretty good against Old Dominion. So if they keep winning, I mean, how many of these poll voters are going to go back and re-eva- reevaluate their downgrading of NC State based on week one, or is that going to be conveniently forgotten 
But nah, uh, spoiler, spoiler alert. They're they're not gonna go back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Texas Tech was fortunate to win that game against Houston, um, but they were also it's a credible win because they made the plays to win that game. Um, it was a struggle. It was an offensive struggle for both teams. It was 14-14 when Texas Tech took over deep in its own territory with about a minute to go. Uh, Donovan Smith, the, the quarterback, he's the backup quarterback, but with him because the starter had been been hurt, um, threw an interception around midfield on a deep pass. I believe it was third, third and long. Um, and then normally you'd say, oh, that's just like a punt, but... Uh, it was a punt with a really good return. Um, and so Houston took over uh, inside the 25, I believe, of uh, Texas Tech. Played it pretty conservatively. And got Texas Tech to burn their timeouts. Kicked a field goal um, to go up 17-14 with, I believe, 38, 37 seconds to go. And on first and 10 from the 25, Donovan Smith, Got out of the pocket. Uh, Houston lost containment. And he ran for a 27-yard gain out of bounds. And just like that in one play, they across midfield and in business. They made a long field goal to force overtime. Then in the overtime, Houston scored a touchdown first. Um, and Texas Tech faced the fourth and long, I believe. Converted. I think it was like a fourth and 20 and converted um and it wasn't one of those a pass that was 20 yards downfield i want to say it was like a 10 10 10 yard pass where the guy managed to run for the first down after the catch uh for some reason i didn't have the volume on so i wasn't sure why houston ended up starting second overtime as well with the football so I, they must have at some point showed to, to start with possession they kicked the field goal Texas Tech got a touchdown, uh, won the game. So it's kind of hard to do the transitive, transitive, uh, blah, 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 you know, the uh, transition. Transitive property. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but you would say, look, Houston clearly struggled in their opener. Um, only had seven points going into the fourth quarter against UT, UTSA. So is Texas Tech defense good? They, they put up good numbers, but is that Houston offense not good? And, and playing Murray State, conversely, yeah, Texas Tech put up really good offensive numbers against Murray State, but the bottom line is at the end of regulation, they had 17 points on Houston. So how good are their offense? Their numbers are impressive, but how good are they? So, yeah, this is a game, you know, unfortunately for NC State, you could say that we're going to learn a lot about Texas Tech. We'll also learn a lot about NC State. It's an interesting matchup. I think there's some areas that NC State can take advantage. First road game for Texas Tech, too, so that's something that should be in the pack advantage. But, yeah, I, I'll let you t- I, I, tell me where the betters are going. But, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people are kind of surprised NC State was a double-digit favorite. I'll be honest with what I saw against Houston, I was not that surprised they're a double-digit favorite. Well, important to note that UTSA, you know, not a big-name program, but an, a program that's respected in the world of college football. Uh, UTSA did win last week at Army in overtime, 41-38. They have a road matchup at Texas this week, and I know that's been a popular kind of trip up uh, mention for the Longhorns, Texas taking Alabama to uh, in, in a four-quarter game. I mean, down to the wire game down there in Austin last week when now they got UTSA coming back. Would not shock me at all to see UTSA go to Austin and shock the Longhorns after, you know, what was a, a, a moral victory for the Longhorns, but still fell short against the Tide. Um, you know, that said, talking about this matchup specifically, uh, Texas Tech, you know, nice, nice double overtime win against Houston. Uh, we'll, we'll note though, Texas Tech had a 17 to three lead going into halftime, so they did cough up a two touchdown lead there to uh, to end up 
having this to needing you know late game heroics from Donovan Smith to to even force overtime, and then once it gets to overtime, kind of a kind of a coin flip situation from there. But in this game, Donovan Smith attempts fifty eight passes, throws for three hundred and fifty yards, as you would kind of hope with that many pass attempts. Uh, through two touchdowns and three interceptions. Now, he did play limited snaps against Murray State in that week one uh, blowout. Take it for what you will, but he did complete 14 of his 16 attempts, uh, threw for 221 yards, and had four touchdowns with no interceptions. So obviously an impressive stat line against the Racers. Uh, Not as much against Houston. Obviously capable of driving the ball down the field, but... If he throws three interceptions against this Wolfpack defense, I think that's going to be a major victory for NC State, particularly at home, particularly against a team that you're not going to be able to afford to turn the ball over. Um, Matt, you mentioned the uh, the gambling lines for this game. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit. I'm trying to pull up my spreads here. I did see that NC State on first glance was favored by Ten and a half. Let me make sure and check. Um, it's Wednesday, September fourteenth. So I'm going to see if that line has changed at all. Oh gosh, I'm looking at basketball here. But um, Matt, just first glance. I mean, you said that you weren't surprised um, to see yeah. NC State as a double digit favorite in this game. What makes you say that? Yeah, it just from the aspect of uh, you know. I- I think Texas Tech has some talent. Um, they're certainly capable of beating NC State. So I don't want people to get the wrong impression. But uh, and and even though Donovan Smith is a backup quarterback, he did start four games last year. He started the last four games of the season, including their bowl win over Mississippi State. Um, but as I, I, you know, some fans may recall, Mississippi State was pretty severely shorthanded going into that bowl game because of COVID. Unlike some teams, they decided to play their bowl game, even though they were a little bit short-handed. Not every team followed followed that. I see uh, what you did there. Man, I see, yeah, I see. yeah. I don't know. I'm I see not what you're doing there. I didn't, I'm not mentioning any names, but uh, yeah. Uh, quick note on Murray State, they're 0-2, um, lost to Jacksonville State 34-3. to So not only is that a FCS <laughs> team that... Um, Texas Tech played in the opener. It's, a, it's probably like Charleston Southern, a pretty poor FCS team. So you probably don't know a whole lot. Uh, I mean, you can pretty much disregard that Murray State game for Texas Tech. But uh, look, they have some pieces. They have a legitimate potential first-round draft pick on the edge of the defensive line. They got some young receivers with a lot of size. Uh, the two outside guys are both 6'4", 6'5", 210 plus. Uh, Donovan Smith has legitimate experience. He can legitimately run with the football if you break containment, which is a concern. If you remember the East Carolina game, and she State did not defend the quarterback run that particularly well against Holt Naylor's. Um, but it is also a kind of a, a work in progress offensive line. What you saw, they gave up five sacks against Houston. And how many more did Donovan Smith probably bail out with his legs against Houston? Uh, They did not particularly run the football very effectively against Houston. Not poorly, but not particularly effectively either. Um, And so, you know, I think with the... um, with the, the situation with the, the offensive line, you know, they're probably not able to do everything that they want to do offensively right now. They are going to throw the football a lot. Um, that is their identity. Uh, but I think the tricky part about this game for NC State may actually be the Wolfpack's offense. Um, we don't know how good Texas Tech defense is because Houston's offense didn't particularly light it up in week one either. But Houston does have a quarterback who is a senior, who is on NFL radars. Um, so they have some talent, at least in the backfield. And Texas Tech is so old on defense. I mean, they really are an old group with a bunch of returning starters, a bunch of returning multiple-year starters. And they're pretty strong up the middle with their defensive tackles. 
and their middle linebacker. Uh, and uh, kind of like in baseball, you want to be strong up the middle with your short stop, second base, center field. Uh, same way in football, you want to be strong up the middle. And, and they are very strong up the middle with an NFL caliber edge rusher. So uh, this is a game that really the, the trenches will probably be very decisive. Can NC State take advantage of their work in progress Texas Tech offensive line and can NC State's offensive line uh, win the matchup against a pretty good defensive front for Texas Tech? It'll be a nice uh, prove-it opportunity for this NC State offense. Obviously did not uh, perform up to expectations in week one against ECU. Um Looked great against Charleston Southern, but again, you can't take too much out of facing an FCS defense. So uh, really NC State's second opportunity to showcase what it's going to have on offense this year. Uh, important note, it will be the first Power 5 matchup that Tim Beck is up in the uh, up in the booth calling plays as opposed to on the sideline. I know Dave Dorn, I think, talked about that a little bit more on on Monday, if I'm not mistaken, Matt, did he add anything to the, uh, you know, any 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 more updates on the Tim Beck calling plays from the booth? Uh, Tim himself talked about it after practice Wednesday. He kind of downplayed it. He almost suggested, you know, he does miss. Uh, you know, he sees a lot of value being on the field, having an interaction with the players. As he said, it's kind of important to give them feedback, get their feedback, so that. They feel good about the plays you're calling and what you're doing. That they know that the input is being received, um, which I think he said was just as important as the play call itself. But yeah, you know, he acknowledged that it's, it's easier to process things quicker when you're in the box. And he's done it before, so he kind of uh, downplayed it. Um, but I, Dave Dorn did say that it, it, he thought it went well. Um, you know, I'm going to get the feeling they don't really want to talk about it that much. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it will be a move that they'll, they'll continue to do, at least in the short term, if not longer. Well, I think, uh, uh, you know, seeing that trend continue would have a lot to do with the results on the field on Saturday this week. Uh, if, if things go well, I would expect to see Tim Beck still in the booth. If things fall apart... Maybe uh, maybe a change there, but uh, I did pull up the the most recent lines that I can find. NC State currently a ten point favorite at home against Texas Tech. Over under is set at fifty four. Um, Which is where I would take the under, by the way, because I, of that NC State defense. And I think Texas Tech defense had the potential to be a little bit sneakier, good than people. Than people think about. So, I uh, I would say that I'm I'm leaning towards the under on the points total. Okay, okay. I, I, I like I like the play. I mean, if there's if there's one position of NC State or one side of the football that I trust from NC State the most right now, it's certainly the defense. So, uh, you know, an under can always be a valuable play with the Wolfpack this year. Just because that defense is capable of shutting out teams for you know quarter, half at a time. Um, we'll see how, how much they're able to slow down Texas Tech there. Ten-point spread, I think people are going to initially look at that and get a little bit nervous based on the fact that NC State was a, an 11.5-point favorite going to Greenville in week one. That spread ended up jumping up to about 12.5, 13, right before kickoff. Um, you know, a game that NC State was certainly capable of, of covering the spread in that game had, you know, you convert two of those uh, drives that you end up on the ECU one yard line and NC State easily covers that spread. Of course, that didn't happen. It was a huge momentum swing in that game. ECU was able to drive the ball down the field um, in response to those goal line stands. And what you end up with is a one point skin of your teeth victory in Greenville. Um, but that said, you know, I think if NC State performs to expectations here, their offense and defense are on against Texas Tech. You know, Again, we don't know how good this Texas Tech team is. I'd probably put them somewhere between 25 and 35 in the country if you wanted to power rate things. Um, you know, Maybe like 
maybe maybe Florida State a good comparison in the ACC in terms of just level of competency. Right. You know, if you want to make an ACC comparison, they did get votes in the poll, um, and I'm looking at the polls right now, and, and uh, Florida State got 42 votes in the AP poll, and Texas Tech got 17. Um, so that is probably a pretty fair. They're in the same ballpark. Um, coaches poll, Florida State next team in uh, on the coaches poll, which is Texas Tech kind of further down at 24. So, but I think that would be a ballpark of maybe similarities of how they have started their seasons and, and where they're at right now. So, um, yeah, and they both have athletic quarterback. Containment, by the way, is going to be huge in this game. That's going to be huge. They really. I can't stress that enough. I think there's an opportunity to get to Donovan Smith, uh, maybe have him make some mistakes, um, but you can't bail him out by losing containment and letting him ex escape. And so, yeah, if the point of emphasis in, after week one was tackling, point of emphasis after week two, containment, quarterback containment. That, that's going to be so important on Saturday. Uh, any other keys to the game that you see with this matchup? Maybe on the offensive end, what do you what are you looking for? You know, from the Wolfpack on, on offense. I think Devin Leary's got to be the Devin Leary everybody thinks he he is, including myself. I'm not trying to say everybody, everybody else thinks it, and I'm not I'm not a believer. Um, I I include myself in that. He's got to be the quarterback we all believe he can be and is. Uh, he was not that at East Carolina. I think the Charleston Southern game was very beneficial to kind of build some confidence with some of these receivers, and that includes the coaches. You know, that's something Dave Dorn's been very open about, and Joker Phillips would acknowledge himself, the receivers coach. You know, that first game, they were intending to get Julian Gray and Anthony Smith, a couple of speedy playmakers, more reps, but if the game was tight, the offense was kind of bogged down a little bit. Joker went with the older guys that he knew better and was more comfortable with and didn't put those young guys in for a lot of snaps, very few. Uh, against Charleston Southern, that changed in a big way, and they're now maybe a little bit more comfortable putting them out on the field in those circumstances. But I think it's going to be important for Devin Leary to, to sling it, uh, be accurate, be in rhythm with the passing game because, you know, Texas Tech that's far has been pretty hard to run the football against. And you know, some of that may be who they played, but they do have a couple of 300-pound defensive tackles who are uh, three-year starters and seniors, and they got a, a middle linebacker who uh, is a three-year starter and a super senior who came to Texas Tech out of junior college when he led the entire junior college in tackles uh, nationally. So, um it may be tough going in between the tackles trying to run the football in this game. I think, you know, Devin Lee being Devin Lee winning the quarterback battle, being the best player on the field is going to be important. I'll be interested to see uh, how many opportunities Demi Sumo is going to get in this game. You know, obviously looked really good against Charleston Southern, only had seven carries. Part of that is just keeping him fresh, ready to go, making sure he's not getting injured in a game like Charleston Southern. Um, but seven carries for 70 yards. He was obviously impressive against ECU as well. Gets another great test against Texas Tech. Um, we'll be interested to see how, how the carries are divided up in the running backs room and if NC State is able to run the ball on this Texas Tech team because you mentioned it. I mean, Texas Tech, has a power five caliber run defense to go against. NC State, a team that struggled to run the football consistently last year, even with a strong offensive line, even with uh, two strong running back options in Zonovan Knight and um, Ricky Person. Um, you know, if, if that's one area that NC State could really improve itself upon this season on offense, is can you get that running game to perform a little bit better? Is going to be a great early season test, um, you know, after you obviously had one in week one against ECU. Let's see what they can do against Texas Tech before, you know, UConn probably going to be another sleeper of a game, but then you're going to face one of the better defenses in the country in Clemson. So this is 
this is a really important tune-up game for for this offense because it's the last time we're going to see this offense go head-to-head against a competent defense before you face that juggernaut of a Clemson defense uh, down at Clemson. And, you know, uh, if you could uh, do me a favor and, and transitive property, say that for me so because you're better. Transitive at... property. Thank you. Transitive Thank you. property. Transitive property. All right. Um, I will say something for uh, the offense when you look back at their performance against um, against East Carolina. You know, Old Dominion ran for a whopping 15 yards on East Carolina and had 290 yard total offense. Um, yeah, and then, you know, that's the same old Dominion team that beat Virginia Tech in week one. Uh, they didn't necessarily move the ball down the field against Virginia Tech either, so they're not a very good offense. But, um, you know, so they, they got to give you a little bit more respect for the East Carolina defense. Maybe it's a little bit better than than we originally thought. But um, it's also noteworthy that East Carolina had 531 yards of total offense on Old Dominion. Uh, that, you know, um, as I mentioned, it's the same Old Dominion team that, if you give me a second, I'll get this right here. I wrote it down. Um, I'm trying to find it. Against Virginia Tech. Of course, Old Dominion did have a touchdown recovery in that game on a on a bad snap on special teams yeah they did um hold on there we go i'm getting closer to it okay so east carolina against nc state had 383 yards of total offense uh, against old dominion they had 531 now old dominion held virginia tech to 333 total yards of offense. So uh, their stats do um, translate well for NC State, especially defensively, what they did against East Carolina's offense, um, and also a little bit of what NC State was able to do offensively against East Carolina's defense. Um, but you're right, this is, this is kind of your last test Connecticut, I believe, if I'm right, is a 40-plus point underdog this weekend up in uh, Ann Arbor playing the Wolverines, mm. if I'm yep. right. So uh, you're right to say that's not going to be a touch. I'm, the line I'm seeing, 47 and a half points. So with an Michigan's over and under. pretty good, yeah. but yeah. Over and under 62. So they're basically saying they think Michigan's going to win 54 to 10 or something like that. So, um, Well, they do have two starting quarterbacks up there in Ann Arbor. So, I, I mean, when you, go, when you got two, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can you can just light up the scoreboard, right? Uh, how many does Connecticut have? Uh I uh, hopefully they have one. Yeah. I, mean, I think their starting quarterback. I forgot Hope in week one. I think oh. they're, they're playing a, a freshman quarterback now. Well, Carter Finley Stadium sold out for that game, a night game against the Huskies. That's very true. That's true. Yeah, a little, Impressive. That's, a little ACC. It, about that. ACC. It just means more. I mean, you know. Yeah. You, and you can hardly. One thing about this weekend: all black uniform, but also the debut of the red lights. At Carter Friendly Stadium, they had them out at the uh, Charleston Southern, but nobody could see them. Yeah. Uh, day daytime yeah. and all. Day uh-huh. game wasn't it a little overcast? Yeah, but not dark enough to. Okay. To to see the red lights, but this game, uh, maybe not at kickoff because it's seven o'clock, but yeah, halftime you should be able to see the red lights in full effect. So I'm told it looks really awesome. So what, well, your... I will. Uh, I will be. I'll be circling that in my notes. I'll be watching for it on TV. Hopefully, it looks as good on TV as it does in person. I know Carter Finley Stadium is going to be a tough place to play for the Red Raiders uh, in a prime time night game on the road. Uh, I guess you know. Last thing to before we wrap up this podcast. You know, if NC State jumps out to a two possession lead in this game. You know, think think back to week one. NC State led twenty-one to seven. 
at halftime against ECU. Had a, had a great opportunity to come out of the gate in the third quarter and close that game away, put, put the Pirates away before they can make it interesting. They did not do that. Uh, this is another opportunity to do exactly that against the team that you know, they, they could beat by double digits. If NC State jumps out to a halftime lead, let's say they're up by 10, let's say they're up by 17, something like that, going into the second half, you know, that's what I want to watch. Uh, that's what I want to see from this team because that's what a top 15, what a top 10 team in the country does against inferior opponents is it puts them away before those inferior opponents can make a game in the fourth quarter. And historically, NC State has done a pretty good job of doing that, at least in ACC play, you know, against teams that clearly they're favored against, clearly at home. Um, you know, can NC State close this game before it gets interesting in the fourth quarter, or is this going to be another four-quarter fight just like it was in week one? I want to see I want to see NC State build its confidence in this game because again it's it's really the last real test before that big ACC opener down in Clemson in Week Five. Um, so you know if NC State stumbles a little bit in this game, yes they'll have UConn to bounce back, build some confidence before Clemson. But this one I think could really have NC State puffing its chest out if it can if it can take control in this game, cover the spread win comfortably you know take care of business next week against UConn then you're looking at you know assuming Clemson takes care of business going going into that week five matchup you're looking at potentially a top 10 matchup in NC State and Clemson uh NC State 15 in the AP poll it'll be close I mean I I don't know if five teams above them will lose in the next two weeks but you know, I, I would I would assume NC State would at least be probably top twelve if they win these next two weeks yeah. going into that uh, Clemson game. Technically sixteen in the AP, but twelve in the coaches, so there's a little bit of a no. difference. So they they probably have a shot uh, at uh, getting up there in the coaches if, if they win impressively and to handle business against Connecticut. As you mentioned, it might be a little challenging getting the top 10 in the AP, but they'll definitely be top 15. Um, and then we'll see whether or not that's the game day game or not. You know, the, the other big game that weekend was Baylor, Oklahoma State, but uh, Justin knows very well. Baylor lost to uh, BYU. They caused did. them to drop a little bit in the polls. However, um, some of the options for next week, college game day, took a hit like Florida I mean Florida Tennessee look like a great game day matchup for next week but then Florida lost to Kentucky um, and so is it possible that Clemson Wake Forest and Winston-Salem next week becomes the move for game day and if so does that kind of kick out any chances of uh, NC State Clemson the following week because you kind of be suspicious of a desire to have the same team two weeks in a row. Well, and another game to watch for in the game day watch uh, for week five, Arkansas travels to Tuscaloosa to face Alabama yeah. in week five. Arkansas currently ranked 10th in the AP poll. They've got Missouri State this week. That's yeah. a win. Then they go uh, and take on Texas A&M on the road. Assuming Arkansas beats Texas A&M, 4-0, 4-0 Arkansas versus 4-0 Alabama in a top-10 matchup, probably going to be yep. the game day. You got it. You're right. I didn't um, see that game. So, yeah. But uh, I'm glad you brought up Wake Forest-Clemson next week because you know that, that game got a lot more interesting now that Sam Hartman's back on the field playing for the Demon Deacons. I mean, Wake Forest, a team that I think, I guess you can't say they're underrated because they do have a ranking next to their name, but nobody's talking about Wake Forest, especially after Sam Hartman, you know, had his health concerns, was going to miss time, didn't end up missing as much time as maybe initially expected. But it's possible Clemson goes into week five, three and one. That's not a gimme game for this Clemson team, especially against, you know, Wake Forest, a team that has uh I would say definitely an above-average offense in the ACC, if not one of the better offenses in the ACC. 
I'm not concerned about Clemson's defense, but can Clemson keep up with Wake Forest? Because yeah. their offense has certainly not clicked yet. So um, if you're NC State, I think I think you want to I you definitely want to see Clemson at four and zero going into Week Five. You don't you don't want to have the Tigers coming off a loss, uh, especially an ACC loss in that. But it's definitely something to circle next week. And you you definitely got to be four and zero yourself. So. Uh... Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. First things first. First thing first. Take care of your own back. business. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, Saturday, prime time, seven p.m. Uh, what's the game on? ESPN. Two. ESPN two. The Deuce. Okay. On the Deuce. Uh, I'll be tuned in. We'll have our post game reflections podcast coming out this weekend. So enjoy the game. Uh, last reminders before we close this podcast out. Uh, remember, you can subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts or on Apple, Spotify, Google Play. Plus, you can always watch us on YouTube. Uh, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment while you're at it. We're on social media. At The Wolfpacker on Twitter is the main account. You can follow me personally at Justin H. Will on Twitter. Give us a like on Facebook, NC State Wolfpack on the Wolfpacker.com. Last but not least, take advantage of that special deal at thewolfpacker.com. For just a dollar, you can get a year's worth of premium subscription to thewolfpacker.com as part of the On3 network. Get all of your insider NC State athletics information. I know I like to use this line a lot, but I think everybody out there wants to be the most informed fan at their tailgate. You, you, you want to be the guy that knows, hey, uh, this backup wide receiver – uh, you know, he was, he was sitting out a couple days during, uh, during practice this week, maybe, maybe watch for, uh, the guy that's above him to maybe get some more reps this week, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, be the most informed fan at your tailgate, take advantage of that deal. Just a dollar gets you a year's worth of premium subscription at the wolfpacker.com. That's going to do it for this podcast. Enjoy the game this Saturday. Hopefully we are talking to you this weekend about the three and oh. NC State Wolfpack. But before that, NC State has to take care of business against the Red Raiders at home. That's going to do it for this podcast. For Matt Carter, I'm Justin Williams, and this has been the Wolfpacker Podcast.